Right now, this is a live look from Harbor UCLA Medical Center in Torrance. Let's listen in. I'm going to give you a little bit of an incident overview of what transpired, followed by Fire Chief Kristen Crowley, Mayor uh, Karen Bass, then the trauma surgeon, Dr. Molly Dean, followed by the council member, Tim McOsker, who oversees the area of the incident. And lastly, we'll have Spanish by firefighter David Ortiz. After the Spanish, we'll allow one-on-one -on -one, uh, questions. So in reference to the actual incident, it took place at 6.58 this morning. We responded to the 1100 block of Alameda Street in Wilmington for an auto fire incident. When we arrived on scene, we had a semi truck and it was a tractor, no trailer, that was on fire. However, the unique aspect of this is that the truck was not powered by the usual fuel like diesel or gasoline. It was a clean air vehicle. It was powered by compressed natural gas or CNG. So it had two 100 gallon tanks that are under 3,300 pounds of pressure and those tanks are mounted on each side of the vehicle to power it. So uh, per usual protocol, we had a total of 10 firefighters that responded to extinguish this fire. However, six minutes after arriving on scene, one of those CNG tanks exploded and it tragically injured nine of our members two of them critically now the truck driver who was an adult female uh, fortunately was not injured she noticed some abnormalities of the tanks she exited called 911 and uh, she remains on scene cooperating but we do have two critical firefighters four in moderate uh, injuries and three that had minor injuries totaling nine now, in reference to the actual actions that we took place on scene, at the peak of the incident, there's over 150 firefighters that ultimately responded. They would handle the uh, medical aspect. Uh, essentially, we had a mass casualty incident, tragically of our own members, to quickly uh, triage, uh, treat, and transport them. We had fire suppression issues to take care of with hose lines to extinguish small fire. And then we have a, a large hazardous materials component. Now we did have flames that continued from one of those cylinders, the non-exploded one, for several hours. We then uh, established a 500 foot perimeter around that blast zone uh, to ensure safety. Now it's important to mention too, there was no homes in immediate danger that are in that area. So therefore there was no formal evacuation needed. And we're proud to say that there's no civilians that were injured. Uh, currently, we still have firefighters on scene along with our friends from law enforcement that are keeping the public outside that perimeter. And this does remain an active incident. And at this point, uh, I'd like to turn this over to the fire chief of the Los Angeles City Fire Department, Kristen Crowley. Well, hello everyone, and thank you so much for being here. Today is a day I think where all of us can take a moment to recognize how intrinsically dangerous firefighting can be. This morning, 10 of our firefighters responded to a reported auto fire in the harbor area. During fire suppression operations aimed at extinguishing the tractor trailer, a significant explosion occurred, injuring nine of our LAFD firefighters. Now, when this incident occurred, the LEFD enacted our plan. Unfortunately, at times, we have to think forward to what can happen at any moment to our people. We already had a plan in place. We focused on three initial areas. One, to stabilize the incident and to ensure public safety. Additional firefighters rushed to the scene with our highest level of command to ensure that the fire was extinguished and no continuing threat existed in the area and to the public. I am also happy to say that this has occurred, our plan is enacted, and there's no continuing threat to the public during this time. Second, we focused on the care of our injured firefighters. We ensured that all of our firefighters received rapid transport to the hospital and receive the highest level of care here at Harbor UCLA Medical Center. Nine of our firefighters were initially injured at this incident. One of those firefighters received specialized care 
at the burn center and he has already been airlifted to LA General Hospital for further care. We also recognize that when a firefighter suffers an injury, this, uh, these effects go well beyond the individual firefighter. These families are impacted as well as our fellow firefighters. As our plan calls for, when we have a significant firefighter injury, we assembled an LAFD and city family, a holistic approach to ensure that we support our firefighters and their families. Third, we focus today, and one of our main focuses is to initiate a significant incident review team to look at the circumstances of today's events. This team is highly trained and they will look at every single aspect of this incident and gather the opportunities for improvement and lessons learned. Now, I've taken the opportunity to meet with every single one of our nine members and to look at them and their faces uh, was something that I will never forget. I'm reminded of how heroic our members are and that each and every day they are putting themselves in harm's way to provide an incredible level of expertise and professionalism to the people that we serve. Now there's no more difficult call to receive as a fire chief than to receive this specific type of notification. As I did this morning, the nine fellow firefighters that were injured during this event, again, I'm reminded of their professionalism and what they do every single day. Now this incident is an opportunity for all of us to remember the commitment of our firefighters and other public safety workers who make that sacrifice each and every day as well as put others before themselves. I would like to thank all of the LEFD members, the hospital staff, other public safety members, our elected leaders, including Mayor Bass, our council members who are here for coming to support our firefighters and their families in our time of need. To the public, we thank you for always allowing us to serve you. And I would like to ask today that you keep our nine injured firefighters in your thoughts and in your prayers. God bless our country, God bless our city of Los Angeles, and God bless the men and women of the LAFD. Next up will be Mayor Bass, who will be providing her remarks. Thank you, Chief Crowley. This is a difficult day in Los Angeles. I wanna thank Chief Crowley for her leadership in these difficult times. We've been in touch throughout the morning and I've also been in touch with the, the union leadership as well. I'm here with a simple message to our firefighters in the building behind me and in fire stations across our city watching the news this morning unfold. The four million people of Los Angeles stand with you. While Angelinos were barely waking up and making their first cup of coffee, our LAFD firefighters were courageously responding to this blaze, putting their lives on the line to protect each one of us as they do every single day. I want to acknowledge the families of the firefighters who were injured this morning and all of their firefighter colleagues. Our thoughts are with you as we all hope for a rapid recovery for all involved. And I will say that Angelinos, are offering their thoughts and prayers as well for you who are injured, your families, and all of LAFD today. What happened this morning is a risk that our firefighters take every single day. And again, we are grateful as a city and as a region for their service. I know some of our firefighters that were injured this morning are in various states of surgery and recovery. And I will say that there is no better staff than the one here at Harvard UCLA Medical Center and LAC USC Medical Center. I wanna thank the nurses, the doctors, the surgeons, 
everyone working together to respond to this incident and led by our next speaker, Dr. Molly Dean, who is the trauma surgeon here. Dr. Dean. Thank you, Mayor Bath. Um, at approximately 721 this morning, our facility was notified of this mass casualty incident that had occurred over in the harbor. We were notified that we'd be receiving multiple patients. Shortly thereafter, the two critically injured arrived. An additional seven patients then followed. Those patients were evaluated for burn, blast, and airway inhalational injuries and stabilized. One of those individuals required intubation and was transported to LA General, which is our local county burn center, one of three in the county. Um, after the patients were able to be stabilized, I was actually able to visualize some of the footage to see the blast injury that had occurred to these patients. And frankly, it's remarkable that none of them were more severely injured after watching the footage. Um, most people should actually do fairly well. They've been stabilized and I don't have additional information on their injuries. Um, we were also fortunate that this occurred close by. Patients arrived very quickly. Multiple staff members were at the ready to assume care of these patients and get them triaged as quickly as possible. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tim McCosker. I'm the councilman of the 15th district. My district includes the community of Wilmington where this incident occurred. Um, I began getting calls from concerned residents immediately after the blast. It was a great and well-trained task force coming out of uh, 38 that responded first and unfortunately the members of 38 in that response were injured. These are members of our community. They're members of, the, of their own families. They're members of the fire family. They're also members of the Wilmington family and so our hearts and prayers go out to them. I want to say that I did have the opportunity to be on scene and I appreciate just how well trained and how professional the LAFD is. On that scene, which is a large perimeter, and I do want to say this to my community in Wilmington, it's a large perimeter. It runs essentially from Alameda to Henry Ford, from Anaheim to PCH. It is a scene that has been secured, and we have Port Police and LAPD who have made sure to secure that area, and we have all of the resources of LAPD there, LAFD there, to make sure that we're responding to the hazardous situation, to the risk, to make sure there's no further risk to the surrounding people, property, and most importantly, to the women and men of our fire department. It is, it is a moment like this when we realize how important it is for us to fund LAFD to make sure that we have all of the resources necessary to respond to the complexity of what happens down at the port, to respond to what happens in the complexity down at the port. I thank the mayor for her support. I certainly thank everybody on this hospital staff uh, for the great care of these, uh, of these firefighters. And I will say as the son of a firefighter and the father of two firefighters, this is a day that you never want to hear of. Every single member of this department is like a father, a brother, a sister, or a child of ours. And so I appreciate the concern that has been outpouring from our, my entire district and from the entire city. So thank you.